hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of the Shed Sessions here. And as usual, I don't need to say who my guest is because you can see who my guest is. This time we have got Inferno Men. We've got Landon. How are you doing, sir? You alright? I am doing pretty good. Just in case people haven't heard of you, which is impossible because most people in this smaller Pokemon community, <laughs> Pokejuba community, have heard of you by now. But just in case anyone hasn't, do you want to give a brief summary of your channel and what it is you do and just all of that jazz? Yeah, so um, my channel is mostly focused around Pokemon content. My streams are themed around uh, shiny hunting and uh, my video content is Nuzlocke content uh, as well as coming up. Very soon, uh, I will be taking part in the Elite Battle League, which is a VGC uh, tournament-style um, league with the small Poketubers, uh, some of them. And, uh, yeah, my, my shiny hunting, I actually recently got Shiny Regigigas to complete the Shiny Regis, which is what I've been doing since I started streaming. Uh, but I've dabbled in some other uh, Nintendo content as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, just... You know, today is the, uh, well, it's pretty much 1st or 2nd of October or something like that. Today, this is the, the day this is out. So, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, you every shiny Reggie, that's an achievement in itself. That's incredible. I don't think I've got the patience for it. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> 24,779 resets combined for all six. Wow. I mean, that's just insane. I'll be honest. That's, <laughs> that is commitment. That's not bad insane. That's good insane. That's incredible. Congrats <laughs> to you on that one. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Basically, as people who have watched this already, we're just going to go back on sort of the past of Inferno Men, talk about the present of Inferno Men, and then talk about what you're planning for your future if you don't want to give too much away. Uh, you've already said you're going to be in EBL season two, and we're going to probably hit onto that later. But first, I'm going to ask you: Do you know when your first video was, or at least your first video that's accessible to? you know, the general public like like me here. Do you know when the <laughs> first one was? <laughs> so, um, my first upload was in June of 2019. It was the first episode of my Pokemon Omega Ruby Nuzlocke. Uh, yes. It, you can tell from my content back then and my cu current content that I've definitely improved in my graphic skills uh, because my layout for that series was basically just a bunch of squares and I didn't really <laughs> put much thought into it. It was just like yellow and red and black not not much uh <laughs> design into it um but uh that knows like kind of like sometimes i find myself going back and watching the episodes just because it's like kind of nostalgic but uh you can definitely tell there's a major difference in the way i did content back then <laughs> to when i do it now yeah yeah it it wasn't bad back then but you can tell you've come a long way since then obviously if you watch one of your nuzlocke videos now the sort of, that the, the the graphical and the aesthetics of it are just uh, they're really appealing. <laughs> yeah, um, that for, it was Omega Ruby Nuzlocke, wasn't it? It wasn't randomised, I don't think. No, um, see, the issue with that was that um, back then I was doing content on my dad and stepmom's old PC, which was like a PC they got in 2011, and uh, that PC could not run PK3DS, so I wasn't oh, okay. able to randomise 3DS games. Uh, I was really excited to end that series because then I led into my second series, which actually got cut off early, um, which was a Fire Red uh, Randomizer Nuzlocke, which I was really excited about because I was finally playing a game that I could randomize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think that the thumbnail from that video was the three, um, uh, from the Amiga Ruby one, it was the three just original starters. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure you went with Sceptile on that one, Tree Coat of Sceptiles, which is, I think you did, didn't you? Uh, no, I chose Mudkit because. Oh, um, did you choose Mudkit? Yeah, because well, I I, actually, yeah. I explained that Trico was my favorite, so I didn't want to like use it again. Oh, and, um, that was it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was it. I remember now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've gone back and watched everyone's first videos. Like, who's who's going to be appearing on this? So it's it's great to know where people have come from and where they've come to. So it's it's been quite interesting to see that. I personally, I think the Gen Three starters are the, one of the most difficult choices to have. 
it's just, yeah. Well, I, I, it, yeah it's, it's horrible. <laughs> At this point, you know, obviously I choose Trico because Sceptile's my favorite <laughs> Pokemon. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree that the Hoenn starters are the most perfect trio for starters, in my opinion. Yeah. Because, like, none of them are bad, and, like, none of them are, like, I think that I know, like, the easiest choice here. Like, I'm going to choose <laughs> this, I'm going to choose this. Um, yeah. Because, like, if you go to Kalos, it's just, like, eh, I'm all right with, with Fennekin, and I guess I'm all right with Delphox. Um, for me, I hate Chespin the entire line, yeah. so I always go for Froki, but Hoenn's not like that. Yeah, they're not very popular. For me... I, I don't mind Chespin, then it just gets, it goes downhill from there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 Chespin's all right, and then, oh, that's it, it just goes after that. Oh, well. <laughs> Was there anything in particular that sort of influenced you to actually start doing the content? Like, spe maybe specifically that um, series, or was it there anything that influenced you just in general to sort of uh, give you the get up and go and do something, or any particular person, or? Um, so... I had been watching Pokemon content on YouTube since I think I was about 11 years old. Um, oh, right, yeah. Okay. So um, I was, like, already into it, and I wanted to start it myself, but um, I didn't really have, like, the materials to do so. Um, but, okay. um, like, a lot of a lot of people have inspired me, like, Patters, MJTV, a bunch of people like that are people that I've been watching for a long time, and... Uh, yeah. I, I tried like doing practice Nuzlocke on my own, um, but I was like overall I was really wishing I could just record them. Um, and yeah. then in 2019, um, I had my first job, and then like in the middle of the shift, I'm oh, like, okay. I want to create YouTube content, and I have <laughs> like money, so I should buy like a face cam and a microphone. So I did, and I just sat down, got a layout ready, um, yeah, downloaded Omega Ruby, and got to work and. It's just been going since then. <laughs> that sounds all right. I know some of the content M and J T V. Do you um, keep up with that stuff at the, at the moment, like M and J T V and Petters? Do you still dabble when you can? Obviously, when you've got the time for it, between college and and obviously making your own content. Um. Yeah. Once in a while, like when when I have time, and I usually have like my watch later playlist cleared out, which. I still need to do that because since I moved into college, I've had barely any time uh, to watch anybody's yeah. videos, unfortunately. But um, usually, when I would clear out my watch later playlist, I I just go to what my recommended was, and I get like M and J T V and Pokemon Seven this challenge videos, and yeah. uh, once in a while I'll tune into one of Patters' streams. Yeah, those challenge videos—they were actually going to be my next question. So it's a good thing you said them. Um, like where they say they use like one of the um, ROMs where it's like I don't know one in a hundred shiny or something. It's like first to get thirty different shinies wins or something. Uh, is that something that you'd see your own channel doing maybe every now and again? Would you ever do sort of because obviously you do let's plays Nuzlocks. Would you ever do gameplay styled challenge videos with someone else? Um, I always considered doing that. Like I actually thought about doing that. Um, our friend yeah. BB Max World he started like doing gaming content on his channel with his uh shield squad version oh yes um, yeah so i was thinking about like inviting him to do that kind of stuff like the challenges and stuff like that but uh he yeah. said personally he doesn't want to do those locks because they're a little difficult for him and he's decided okay. besides legends arceus he doesn't want to do gaming content on his channel um but like okay. if anybody ever wanted to do like a challenge video like that with me i'd be completely open to because those <laughs> videos are really fun to do or to yeah. watch yeah, if anybody wants to, feel free to comment down below, but I'll be the one getting a notification. So what you should do is subscribe to Inferno Men, <laughs> follow him on Twitter, and, you know, somehow contact him and say, hey, I'm up for that. That would, yeah, do that. But also comment down below as well if you want to. That'd be nice. But yeah, no, that's fair enough. I don't even remember what her second Pokemon was, to be honest, and we just battled her, so, you know. Um, let's go with French. Pokemon with a Grass-type move that won't get killed by the type it's trying to destroy. Also, it has a bug type move, and Slowking happily uh, happens to be a psychic type, so uh, I'll start with a Leaf Storm just to see if it hits. Of course it didn't. It has V Create? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Knock, knock, open up the door. It's That's Victini's move. 
Give it back to Victini right now. No, you you lost your V Create privileges, Slow King. You you officially lost your V Create privileges. Give them back to Victini. I don't have a Victini myself, but you just lost your privileges. Go go hand them back. So is there like a particular series that's a favorite of yours? Because I know some people maybe they have nostalgic connections to like the first series they do, or maybe there's one where um, I don't know, it's like a deathless Nuzlocke or a particular Nuzlocke where they feel like they achieved something amazing. I don't know. Have you got a particular series that you enjoyed most? I think personally, my favorite series that I ever did was uh, my Ultra Moon randomizer Nuzlocke. Um, okay. Because for the most most part of the series, I only had one death. Um, unfortunately, that was Anthony the Pig Knight um, that uh, lost. Right, yeah. uh, I encountered a uh, Empoleon, um, and that Empoleon unfortunately killed my Pig Knight. Um, but I caught it, and I named it Hayes after Hayes B. Um, ah, okay. But I, I like to remind him from time to time that he's a killer, killer penguin. <laughs> um, Hayes but... B the killer penguin. <laughs> <laughs> If that's not his Twitter um, sort of little, you know, you, you've got a little segment at the top. If that's not in there, then he, he's missing out now. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, that that was our, our only death for the longest time. But um, I had a, a really fun time moving through the game. Of course, only having one death, I didn't really change up the team that much. But I grew like strong bonds with the Pokemon that were on the team. Um, yeah. I, I had pretty good fossils too. Uh, one of them was Alolan Raichu, which I regret not using, but that's one of my favorite Pokemon, so I got really excited about that. Okay. Um, that's cool. And our my starter Mega Venusaur uh, survived the entire uh, yes, series. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I, I did the final blow to Giovanni to end the Rainbow Rocket episode. Okay. Hello. 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 Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there. I think you cut out for a sec. Or I cut out for a sec. Either way, it cut out for a moment. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Um, I got up to... Um, you beat Giovanni uh, with Mega Venusaur. That's where I got up to. <laughs> yeah, that that was the final blow to Venusaur. I mean, yeah. not, not uh, to Venusaur, to Giovanni. Yeah. All right, two seconds, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little weird introduction, say we just cut out, and then I'll let you carry on from there if you wanted to. All right. Yeah. Sorry, just a quick cut out there. Um, yeah, um, I, what I'd got is up to you, um, your Mega Venusaur, basically, uh, against Giovanni. What was it there? Um, so the Venusaur did the final blow to Giovanni, um, oh, winning okay. the Rainbow Rocket episode for us. So it was nice uh, to yeah. not only have my starter make it all the way to the end, but to uh, finish yeah. the series for us. Uh, that's quite a poetic victory then. That's quite nice. <laughs> okay. Well, th why, I've al I always ask this to um, anyone that does this because I'm quite interested in it. I've never done, the, I never done Nuzlocke's myself until the ones recently because, believe it or not, you guys, all three of, of people I've interviewed so far, you, Josh and Josh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you know maybe want to do a Nuzlocke series? So thank you for that. But I want to ask you yourself, why particularly Nuzlocke's? What got you into those? Um, so I had played all the Pokemon games at at this point when I like found out about the Nuzlocke challenge, um, and you know playing the same Pokemon game over and over again. Sometimes it could be fun, but like sometimes you want to like change it up a bit. Um, and the yeah. Nuzlocke can do that for you. And if you really want to change it up, randomizers are the best because you can get like so many different Pokemon because it's all random. Um, yeah. So <laughs> when I decided that I wanted to do a YouTube channel, um, pe I knew that people weren't going to like want to pick up on straight up playthroughs of Pokemon all the time. Uh, they were going to want something different. Um, and a lot of people on YouTube, when they go for Pokemon content, most of the time they're going for Nuzlocke content. So... Um, that's what I went with. It's what I enjoy doing, and I know people enjoy doing it as well. Um, yeah. So I've just been doing it ever since. I don't really mind um, how many people are watching and stuff like that. I just enjoy doing it, so that's why I just keep on doing it. Yeah. As you alluded to just then, do you think, obviously, it, it gives games that better replayability? Because there's certain Pokemon games that people just think, 
aren't up, not bad, but they're not up to scratch as others. But if you play it in a randomized Nuzlocke, it makes it more enjoyable. Is that something you feel? Or? Yeah, basically, um, even if it's not randomized, like the game force, like the, the challenge forces you to get the first encounter on each route that you run into. So let's say you're doing a Gen 4 Nuzlocke unrandomized. And like usually yeah. when people play Gen 4, they're like, oh, I'm going to choose Chimchar and then I'm going to catch a, a Shinx <laughs> and a Starly and stuff like yeah. that. Well, with the <laughs> Nuzlocke, you could end up with a Bidoof and a Wormadam and just a bunch of different things. So it like changes it up. And if you end up getting those normal stuff that you usually get, well, if that Pokemon dies, like if it faints, then you can't use it ever again. And then you have to consider another option. So that's why Nuzlocke's are like playing the game for the first time every time, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That I totally agree. Couldn't agree more, to be honest. Um, you don't just do Nuzlocke, so I've, I've mentioned that a lot. I've asked you about those quite a lot. But obviously, you do more than that. You stream... Um, whenever you can do, because obviously you're a busy man now, you've got college to deal with, which is more important, uh, just. But um, yeah, you, you stream as well, obviously. So what what made you want to stream eventually as well? Because I think you started with, you know, just playing Nuzlocke and streaming came later on. So why the why include that as well? Um, so for streaming, um, I didn't, I was kind of like nervous about it um, because I didn't know like how many people would show up and how enjoyable it would be. I was kind of nervous of like talking to people in real time rather than having like a recording go out. Um, yeah. So for the longest time I held it off, um, but I would always like, I was in a moment where I was like shiny hunting all the time. They're like, dude, you have so much luck, you should just stream this. So eventually I, I decided to start streaming shiny hunts. Um, the first stream I did officially, um, I have some deleted streams of gameplay because oh, okay. uh i did among us with friends and uh, let's just say that my friends uh don't like competitive games because they were <laughs> they were screaming over each other the whole time so i just deleted that stream um yeah but my first like official stream uh was a dynamax adventure stream and um okay. i was just doing random legendaries uh, i got my first ever heatran and it was a first encounter shiny so oh um, brilliant that's good yeah it was a pretty good first stream and then the next stream I did after that was the Reggie Rock stream, the first Re well the first Reggie stream because we got Reggie Rock in that stream in seventy nine encounters. But um, yeah, I've streaming has been the most successful part of my channel, and to put it the way my stepdad did, it's basically my therapy because I have people <laughs> that I can talk to, and shiny hunting is something that I do anyway, so I could just be sitting on my butt and doing it on my own time. But I. I put it out there for other people because, you know, it's a community where yeah. shiny hunting together and uh, enjoying ourselves. And that's what really makes streaming the best for me. Yeah, that's a fantastic way of putting it. You could just be doing this while sitting on your butt or you could actually do something with it. That That's that's perfect. I, I like the way you've, you've, you've said that. And your stepdad, obviously, a very wise man. Hmm. <laughs> obviously, I, um, I, I'm pretty sure you almost exclusively just... Um, stream on YouTube, but you do have a Twitch as well. So I just, what do you have a preference over one or the other, or do you have certain games you do on one that you do you don't do on the other, or vice versa? Um, so I think back in July, um, I made the decision to take a break on Twitch uh, because uh, mm -hmm. I had started Twitch to do games that weren't shiny hunting because I wanted like shiny hunting was the most successful streams that I had on YouTube, so I wanted to keep YouTube specifically to shiny hunting. And then have like other Nintendo games and Nuzlocke challenges over on Twitch. Um, yeah. But the thing was, is that like, it wasn't really for the Nuzlocke's either. It was really for my other Nintendo content because, you know, people are used to Pokemon stuff on my YouTube channel. I wanted to start yeah. fresh on Twitch with other stuff. Um, but, okay. you know, people, people were like, you know, not only was I not like getting a lot of people coming to the... Uh, Majora's Mask streams I was getting like really aggravated with the game so like having no one to talk to and um, playing a game that's like super duper hard uh, and getting frustrated is not like the best uh, chemical formula so I decided yeah. to take a break um, but recently I made the ultimate decision to not have any plans to return to Twitch um, okay, yeah. personal preferences because um 
I don't believe Twitch is a very good platform for smaller streamers. They seem to showcase the bigger streamers a lot more and not their algorithm isn't really like fair to people trying to grow. Because if you go to like a category and look up people like like a certain game and filter like it'll bring up the game, but it'll have like the people with the most viewers at the top and you have to scroll yeah. a lot to find certain channels. So um, not yeah. only is it not good for smaller streamers, in my opinion, I also think that, you know, their their platform isn't like it's not a very good community because you know with the hate raising going on and i'm not doing anything about it i just don't think twitch is like the best platform for streamers no i i agree with you on that one it's and i i'm sure you'll agree this isn't an interview for me and to keep saying things i think but i do think that if you search pokemon sword for example on twitch and you see someone with one and a half thousand people watching you're not going to get sure the the stream you watch might be technically more um more set up than others but the interaction you're going to get is like almost nothing yeah. whereas if you watch it yeah if you watch a stream with someone with i don't know 20 views you, you're going to be they're going to be reading every comment they're going to be interacting with their chat and that is in my opinion what streaming should be and that's a good thing is that's exactly what you do yeah i try to yeah. read every chat that i can and I, I make sure people know, because I have a lot of kids that are just like, read my last chat. If I'm not reading your <laughs> chat, you probably said something I don't want to say. So yeah. <laughs> let's just throw that out there. Um, yeah. But I try to read everybody's chat that I can, because the interaction is really why I stream. It's to talk to people, um, because, you know, I... This is going to sound sad, but I have more <laughs> friends on YouTube than I do in real life. So, you know, being able yeah. to talk to them on stream <laughs> is really what what means a lot to me um because obviously i live with my best friend now we're, we're living yes, together in do, college yes. so uh, i've been spending time with him um but i just love the interaction that i get through streaming it's really what means the world to me <laughs> oh my god there it is there it is oh my god Let's go! Oh my god! <laughs> and it's the shield too! It's the shield too! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh! Unfreaking believable! Oh, this took way longer than it needed to, and we finally got it. Well, speaking of college, you said you moved in with your best friend. Um, yeah, I, firstly, you graduated during college. That's that's pretty damn good. It's been a, a where this is now the start of October. I, I plan to do this, you know, obviously around September, August -y time. And around that time, you'd hit 1K viewers. You'd just started to get off to college and everything. And yeah, so what... This is going to be a really broad and long question, but what, how, you know, how are your thoughts on graduating and hitting 1K pretty much all at the same time? How's that all gone? I got to say, like, to summarize in a, in a <laughs> short way, it, it feels like, you know, a lot of things have been going well uh, in my life in terms of, like, succeeding in things. Like, yeah. um, graduating high school, of course, that's, like... Um, not like the biggest achievement, the biggest achievement in your life if you go into college like I am, then graduating yeah. college is like a bigger <laughs> achievement than graduating high school. But um, to do that and then like hit 1K not that much after, about a month later, um, yeah. it just felt like I was like moving up because for the longest time in high school, uh, I felt like I didn't know what I was going to do later in life. Um, but when I started doing YouTube and stuff like that, and you know, my, my channel started growing a lot last year. Because my first year of YouTube, I was only at like 250 subs at the end of the year. And then this last okay. year of YouTube, I skyrocketed all the way to 1,000. So it's really changed. Um, you know, my my life is like heading in a direction that I want to go in. And, uh, you know, just to hear my parents say that they're, they're proud of me and they love what I'm doing, it it just means a lot, you know, to have that support. And, yeah. uh, oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's... You're the th I've only done three episodes of this and you're the third person to sort of say or agree that 
in the last sort of nine months to a year, something's happened in the community and it's just exploded because uh, all of us, yeah, both the two Joshes I've interviewed and yourself now, you know, say this time last year, were either just starting to pick up with their the views and their subs and everything. Uh, obviously, Lonely Hermit only started in January of this year, but mm. it just seems like something's happened in this community. We're, and we've all, we're all sharing each other's stuff. We're all supporting each other, and it is genuinely fantastic. It's beautiful, and I love seeing it. But yeah, do you think that... I, I don't know. Do you think that something's happened in the past year with all of us to to, to sh spread the love, if that makes sense? I think um, what's been going on is that, uh, you know, COVID put everybody at home and a yes, lot of pe yeah. a lot of people were watching the same people over and over again, uh, <laughs> yeah. like the bigger ones. And then, you know, suddenly they're just like, you know, I feel like there's other people I can watch. So they just search all the Pokemon content they can. And then they come across smaller creators and realize that, you know, they should be given a chance. And a lot of yeah. people have like started their channels during COVID and stuff like that. Um, like our friend, it's really Timmy B. He recently had his one year anniversary on YouTube, oh, um, yeah. back in August. Um, so a lot of people started doing a lot of content in, in during COVID and, uh, a lot of people started checking out smaller content creators. And I think that's why like the community has had that big boom. Um, because I know that like a bunch of the bigger PokeTubers have been checking out smaller creators. I actually got a comment from, uh, asteroid videos on one of yes, my episodes yeah. of the series with josh uh he follows me on twitter now too um oh that's good I, I just i just think there's like a lot more support a lot of people like you know starting to realize the smaller pokemon tu tuber community a lot more than they used to and it's giving a lot of people a chance and i think that's really awesome yeah no i couldn't agree more on that one I, it does seem like not people are getting bored of the bigger streamers, but they're now noticing the smaller ones because, to be honest, the qual the quality of the content which the people are trying to make, like yourself, it's I think like a Nuzlocke series you do or you know anyone does in our little small po PokeTuber community, most of the time the quality of it is just as good as other people. It just you know it's just the other people do that as a job, so they've got more time to edit it and make it a bit more fancy if you want to call it that. And but I think the core content of people like yourself are doing is just it's as good as anyone really so that's i yeah i'd like to commend you on that one and congratulate you on that so yeah keep Thank up you. the good work is all i'd say <laughs> yeah i uh, i just yeah. i just really think that you know this is it, it's my dream uh my main goal is to be a full-time content creator and i i really think oh, okay. that i'm headed in a positive direction for that yeah yeah, well, that was going to leave me on to my next question. Then, um, what would, what was your future plans for the channel going to be? Because obviously, you're in college now, because so that will take priority for a bit. But like you say, you want to do this for a career as well. So, uh, yeah, what uh, at this moment in time, what are your sort of immediate plans? Is it just going to be? I think it's streaming when you can is pretty much something you've said in a tweet recently. Yeah, basically, like Tuesdays and Thursdays is mostly when I can stream. Um, yeah. okay. Fridays and Saturdays, if I'm not busy. Uh, because Saturdays football games are going on and we perform in them for band. Oh, okay. uh, but like if I'm too exhausted on a Friday because we have band rehearsal early on Fridays, uh, like this last Friday, I was not going to stream. I was like exhausted. I was like, I don't think I'm going to stream. But then I was like, I feel like I'm going to get the gig is tonight. And then I did. So, you oh, know, well, obviously good, it was worth it. Um, but I, I try to stream when I can, unfortunately with band and stuff like that, taking out my evenings, uh, days that I'm not streaming, I tend to be at band for half yeah. of the evening and then I, I get back and I just want to spend time with, with Cameron. So, um, I, unfortunately I've not been able to make it out to other people's streams that often, um, which really has made me feel guilty. Um, but you know, I try, I try my best. Uh, yeah. I don't, I, I don't really think it's like mostly college that's prevent me, preventing me from this because I've been able to do all my other stuff with no problem. It's just that band okay. has taken up most of my time more than anything. Right. So, yeah, um, no, fair I, enough. I, I've already <laughs> well, discussed um... this. Um, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'm not planning on doing band after this year, but we'll have to see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It's <laughs> it's still good to do. Uh, well, I'll I'll say from a just um, from a on watcher. 
uh, a watcher's point of view, whatever, whatever the word is, I don't, I don't know. Well, someone will let me know in a comment what the word is. From a viewer point of view, um, I, I see your name a lot in streams as a as a viewer, so I don't, I I think you've um, I think you've filled up as much as you can. You've given as much as you can, so I don't think you should feel guilty about not having time to visit streams because if I ever pop into a stream, your name's ninety percent of the time always there. You and BB Maxwell for a start, so that's. Yeah, so you don't need to feel guilty about that. Don't you worry about that one. <laughs> um, the only sort of well, I'm wrapping. I'll wrap it up now because I only really have one question left for you, and that is, with everything going on with band and college and your streams and everything, do you have um, any planned series or even like any more collabs or any specific streams, any sleep blocks or anything or anything you want to promote? Why now you've got the chance to? Well, you said this would be coming out early October, correct? Yes, first or second, I can't remember exactly, you know, yeah. <laughs> All right, so at the time that you guys are watching this, um, recently, uh, the Pokemon <laughs> Black 2 and White 2 three-way Soul Link with myself, Always More Videos, and Jeknition has begun. Uh, uh -huh, very okay. excited about that. Uh, actually, at the time of recording this, we're actually planning on hopping on a call and randomizing the file tonight uh, because oh, uh, <laughs> Timmy and I are finishing up our Sun and Moon uh, extreme randomized the verses very soon and we're planning on starting this whole link after that uh so we are planning on happening on a call tonight so I'm, I'm pretty excited about that um and uh my current solo series which should definitely still be going on uh is the soul silver randomizer type lock uh my types are chained um so my yeah. starter my starter yeah, I'll go ahead and spoil it. My starter was a Giratina, uh, so yeah. I unlocked Ghost and Dragon, and basically from that point I had to encounter a Dragon type or a Ghost type, and then like if it has another type, then I unlock another type. So the types are chained. Um, so oh, that's those, a cool. That's a cool. Those one. are my current stuff, and of course EBL season two. We mentioned that earlier has started. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This will be. Yeah. This episode today is Sunday, third of October. If you're watching this, so yeah, I, I think EBL is is here it started oh, yesterday yeah. <laughs> yes yes it did yeah yeah oh, okay well everyone look out for those things there <laughs> just look out for all of those things. the best way to find out all of them is to go over to um inferno men's channel if you haven't already and click subscribe you might be watching this because you're a fan of inferno men you're a fan of landon so you're already there and you already know about all that and that's fine but if you don't know go over there click subscribe and follow those i i i I know it sounds like a cliche, but I fully recommend it. His stuff is brilliant. There's a reason why Lander's got 1.3k subs at the moment, at the time of recording. It might be 1.4 by the time it comes out. Who knows? But there's a reason why that number's big, and it's because the content's good. So go subscribe. Um, I appreciate yeah, it. That's all right. No problem. Um, before we go, you, you do have merch as well. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm actually wearing it right now. I didn't even realize that, but this oh, was, <laughs> um, my first design, the team Inferno, uh, design. Also, uh, tomorrow as of recording, I should be pushing out the Reggie club merch, uh, to celebrate oh, getting good. all the Reggies. I have a t-shirt design coming out and, uh, with EBL season two out, there should be Iowa and Cinderwar merch out. So look okay, into it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. If you want to go and buy some merch, do it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to. <laughs> I've said this to other people as well, but I've, I've now got my first full-time job since December. I'm getting my first packet. Well, I would have had it by now. First pay packet on the 24th of September. And I'm going to be getting a bit of merch from a few people. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. Go and get some. But I think for now, that's pretty much it from us. Um, are there any final words you want to say before we all skedaddle off? Uh, thank you guys for coming out and watching this interview. I, I appreciate it. I've never done anything like this before, so this has actually been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've not really done anything like this before, apart from the two previously. But yeah, so it it is fun. I like doing these. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. So yes, thank you for watching, everyone. It's uh, it'll, be good for, it'll be goodbye from me. And yeah, I assume Landon is saying goodbye as well. <laughs> Adios. Adios, yes. See you later. Bye. Thank you for watching this video. I do recommend the couple I've put on screen now. I've got the little subscribe circle. Click it if you want. Well, click something.